Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can you speak in tongues for three minutes? Just tongues. Because of what we are going to share tonight. Come on, somebody, just speak in tongues for three minutes. Shebro zeboko shika braka talabaye. Shebro zabaka shebro zeboko shika rabako stebarakasta. Come on, somebody, speak in tongues. Ko shamarando robo zeboko shaka braka taraba. Shereko seke broko shaka taraba. Ko zebro zalaba. If you don't have tongues, that's okay. Just speak in your own language. Shere broza bako shaka braka taraba zebro shere rebosta. Rako se broze remando roboza baka shaka braka taraba. Kabra kata raba zebo shirebo saka raba karaba zebo shta. Kabro zerebo zeba kata raba zerebo shte kereba baba kusterebo. Karo bo 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 zerebo shta. Come on, somebody raise your voice and speak to God. Come on, somebody. Sabroso robo sabakos, cerebro sabakos cerebro. Jesus, friend for me. Rosara sabakos cerebro. Presence, my God. Jesus, you're my friend. Oh, she brought the book of secret.
Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The reason why I asked us to pray in tongues before I start preaching is because of the nature of the sermon I'm going to preach today. To some of you, don't get excited first. To some of you, it's going to be correction. To some of you, it's going to be rebuke. To some of you, it's going to be answers. It's going to mean many things. Praise God. But in the end, that Jesus Christ will be glorified. Somebody say amen. I shared some of the things I'm going to share today in a school of ministry setting. And the people in school of ministry kept insisting and saying, please give us a sermon version of this. Please give us a sermon version of this. I thought that I was going to speak this only in school of ministry and I was done. Praise God. One, because of the nature of someone I'm going to preach, but number two, because of the kinds of people we preach to. (laughs) Praise God. Of course, in the way I'm going to share the things I'm going to share, it's going to appear a bit different to the way I preach every day. But the reason why I felt led by the Holy Spirit and many confirmations came through the people that I hung around with and the church people themselves who have been with me in school of ministry about this issue is because I felt that the more we keep quiet about some of these things, our consciences are not going to be right before God and we owe the generation that is coming a certain accountability. And those young men and women who are dreaming to be ministers tomorrow, somebody say amen. The teacher in me would have preferred to teach it differently, but the apostle in me cannot teach it another way. So I'm going to teach it the way I feel it in my spirit. Praise the Lord. Of course, the apostolic sometimes comes with love (laughs) and sometimes comes with a a rod. So bear with me if the rod comes. If it hits a hard way, understand that we speak the truth in love because we bear in our hearts that if we don't speak the truth in love, men cannot be edified. Praise the Lord. And as I share these things, I pray that you examine my heart before God. If there be any hatred, if there be any envy, if there be any contention, if there be any strife, and these of which I'm very convinced before God that there is none of that matter. But I pray that as you listen to these things, something opens to your spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Recently I was sharing somewhere in, uh, I think, Mook, and I, 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 I opened the scripture In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and I think I'm going to begin from there, from verse 1. He says, Would to be ye could bear with me a little in my folly. It might look like it's foolishness, right? And indeed bear with me. He says, For I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to who? To Christ. And he says, but I fear, lest by any means as a serpent beguiled it through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Jesus Christ. And the next verse says, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, not this, for if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we've not preached, another spirit, whom you've not received, another gospel, which you have not accepted, the Bible says you might well bear with him. That means it's possible that for somebody to preach a Jesus that was not preached, to minister another spirit, and the Bible says to minister another gospel contrary to the teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible because Paul says so. So his fear is genuine to the church in Corinth. He fears that because they are espoused to one Christ, certain things and people are going to come into the body of Christ someday, or in that day still, who carry a form of subtlety, and that subtlety is to the end of the deception of the saints. Now, it might look like folly when Paul is speaking. He says, it might sound foolishness, but please bear with me. This is a genuine concern. Praise the Lord Jesus. This is a genuine what? It's concern. Why might it sound folly? Because it might sound like I want to attack somebody. It might sound like I'm putting an attack on a particular ministry. It might sound like I'm attacking an individual. This altar has been consecrated not to attack men, but it is not denied from speaking the truth. I hope you know that. 
I have never mentioned the name of a man on this altar, and I don't think any of me or my pastors intend to teach or preach against an individual in the gospel, because Fanera has not been built by attacking individuals. And if you're here with the mentality that the things I'm going to share attack the particular individual you might think, then maybe, just maybe, you need a purification of conscience. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord purify your what? Your conscience. But if you're a reader of the word of God, you will agree that it is necessary that people's eyes are open to the truth. Because I fear that the devil is deceiving men in subtlety. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Where did this begin from? It began as a contention in my heart for so many months. I think more than a year. When the Lord was intending to speak to me about something, and I deliberately refused to, I didn't want to hear. Because the reason why I didn't want to hear was the responsibility it was going to come with. Praise the Lord Jesus. So I fought in my spirit whether I was willing to receive this responsibility right now, or that God should pass this to another man and let me preach my things which I understand. But as you grow in God, you realize that you're not of your own. Somebody shout hallelujah. You go where the Lord wills you to go. You speak what he wills you to speak regardless of whether it costs your life or even your everything. Praise the Lord. So it's on that basis that I felt led by God to, 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 after a long while of struggling within my heart, one, I didn't even feel the qualification to share this thing. Not as though I had not seen the Lord in these matters, or that he had not, it was not enough that he had entrusted me with these things. But sometimes when you share certain things, depending on where you are, some people might think, ah, this guy is sharing because he's jealous. You understand what I'm saying? That's why, as I share in scripture, you look at scripture, analyze whether this is a different spirit, Oh, I am speaking the truth. Praise God. So, Paul has a genuine fear for the church of Jesus. And he says, it is possible to be led away. He fears. He says, I fear this by any means as the serpent beguiled it through the subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity. I fear that you can be deceived in subtlety. Not simplicity. That means that the devil deceives in subtlety. He, 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 comp- he makes things a bit complex. And in the complexity of things there, he deceives. Because he knows, even the Lord speaks in subtlety. That's the essence of wisdom, to come and give subtlety to the man who is simple. So he knows if God works in subtlety, he's not going to work in simplicity. He will work in subtlety because God works in subtlety. Now, subtlety here, I'm talking about a cunning craftiness of high intelligence. A high level of knowledge. The devil is not stupid. He is powerless, it's true, but he's not stupid. Somebody say amen. Amen. He's crafty. The Bible says he lies in wait to deceive. It's a deliberate sin. When When a lion is creeping onto an animal to eat, it doesn't pound its feet. No, it goes crawling slowly. That's craftiness. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, where did this begin from? One day, Somebody sends me a clip, a video clip, of a supposed minister of the gospel, who, whose name I'm not going to mention, neither his ministry. And this man was operating in a gift of the spirit, which was wonderful. But as he was operating, my spirit started to feel like there was a problem. What do I mean to say? The voice of God is a humbling voice. It is not supposed to be a voice that exalts a man. The Bible says in Revelations that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. How many of you believe that? If the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, then the mind of the Christ is humble. Let this mind be in you even as was in Christ, who found it no robbery, to be like unto God, but humbled himself. He put on the likeness of man and came in a form of a servant or in a form of or or fashion of a man and formed in the likeness of a servant. The Bible says he humbled himself and was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The place of the voice of God when it comes on a man, it's supposed to humble them. You remember when Jacob had experienced a visitation. He says, for I have seen the Lord and my life has been preserved. He's not a man who walked out of the presence. You see, may I what? 
I hear God. No, 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 no. The voice of God humbles. Why? Because it comes with a responsibility. If you have understood what I'm saying, say amen. amen. So I see this guy on the pulpit. And he's demonstrating power. And I don't expect, sorry, I don't, I don't have a problem with the liberties of the spirit. Because that's the essence of phronesis, which is the wisdom of God. Because it helps you determine the mode of action in the end inside. But as you behold that wisdom, by which you determine the mode of, 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 of action in, or at the end inside, the back of your head has that mind that it is God working in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And regardless of where you're at in this equation of demonstration and manifestation of the Spirit, forget not that it is the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that there are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. Diversities of operation are the same Spirit. Diversities of administration by the same Spirit. The Spirit gives us diversity. The Spirit gives us operation. The Spirit gives us administrations. But it is the Spirit that gives us. Not the intended human Spirit. How many of you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit, so are they the children of God. Not as many as lead themselves, or as many who do whatever they want in the presence of God. But it says, for as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, so are they the children, the heels, the spiritually mature of God. They're not just technon. They're not just sons. No, they are heels, the Greek word. They're the mature ones of God. That means that the highest level of maturity is you being led by the Holy Spirit. How many of you understand that? Now I had a problem. I'm seeing this video of a guy who is doing a miracle. And he's saying, can I show up? He's saying, he's saying, can I show up? This, listen to the statement. Can I show up? And people are screaming, show up, man of God, show up. Then he does a miracle and prophesies on someone. I said, wait. When did the gift of the Spirit become a show off? Where is purpose in the show off? You've heard of young boys who say, I'm going to do, one time I was in a meeting, some guy stood up and said he's going to do a luxury miracle. Luxury. Luxury. Because he can. In that meeting, I knew somebody with a short leg. In that meeting, he called out a woman and said, you come. Put your hands like this. Person. Grow. The person, it, it grew. Go back. But in the meeting, I knew somebody with a short leg. So I didn't understand how God can skip a man with a short leg and just play with another person's arm to go out front and behind. Because the man has power. I started to think in my spirit, this is not the power by which the Christ did miracles. No. He did miracles that they might know him. It's eternal life. To know the one true God and His only Son, Jesus. And then a couple of days later, sometime back, somebody sent me a video. And there was this man of God who was prophesying on a little lady. He says, now, can I go deep? He says, yeah. That day, you are putting on a pink knicker. And the woman says, it's true, man of God. This is a video. Or you can even go on YouTube and look for it. In the first round, you used the blue condom. It's true, man of God. She fell down. Who has ever watched that video? Now I say, which spirit is entering women's knickers and explaining the colors of condoms because it is forensic prophecy? No, 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 help me. How do you enter a woman's knicker, know her color, the color of the knicker? He says, in the first round you use the blue condom. Is that true? Yes. In the second round, you use nothing. Can I go deeper? Yes, sir, man of God, that is true. People are screaming, forensic. Prophesy. Go deeper, papa. I'm like. I said, if that's a master prophet, then Isaiah was minor. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit cannot lead you into a woman's nika. But now again, I know people are desperate to hear God. But the Holy Spirit cannot lead you to tell you how many condoms a person used. People, this is another thing. There is no purity in it. 
There is no revelation in it. And it confuses knowledge and accuracy for depth. It thinks that because it knows, therefore it's deep. Knowledge is not depth. Accuracy is not depth. Praise God. I have not mentioned any ministry here. So I go out to search myself and find what is really happening. Because you see, even me, I see in the spirit. I might not be to the level of seeing Nikaz, eh? but even me, I see. You understand what I'm saying? But you see, every time my eyes would close to pray, I feel like there's something wrong. I don't know what it is. How many of you, how many of you have watched the video and your heart is like, mm, I don't know what, but there is something I don't get. I'm here to explain that thing. Praise God. Praise God. Now, this is what happens with some brethren. Like the Bible tells us of one wonderful man. Was he Balak? Balaam. Balaam the prophet. The Bible says that the, Balaam the prophet gave in to the gain sayings of Korah. Amazingly, if you read scripture, Balaam was among the prophets who prophesied the coming of the Christ. Every time the spirit of the Lord come, comes upon him, he will prophesy the testimony of the Christ. He's the one who speaks of the Jesse, Ruth, and David. He, 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 he used to hear God. But because Balaam was a lover of money, once in a while, he used to heed into a familiar spirit. And they are familiar spirits that are both accurate. They are familiar spirits that are both knowledgeable, but they are not true. And the problem with them is this. The more you yield to those spirits, the Bible says you're defiled. Leviticus 19 verses 31. The Bible says in Leviticus 19 verses 31, that regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. He says, I'm the Lord your God. When a man yields to a familiar spirit, he's defiled by it. Now, this man of God used to sit in the true office of the prophet. But every time pressure was put on him to perform, he found himself going on another spirit. Because at one particular point, God doesn't speak every time. You must understand that. That's not God. It take heed of people who say, me the moment I want to hear, I just do like this. Then God speaks. Listen. Eh? God speaks on purpose. Not human desire. The Bible says no scripture. No prophecy. None of that sort is of any private interpretation. You don't wake up and say, prophecy of scripture, not of prophecy of familiar spirit. But if you're talking of prophecy of scripture, it is not of any private interpretation. You don't just wake up and say, now, can I prophesy? Then you just decide. No, it's not your decision. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. How many of you understand what I'm saying? And the next verse says that, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. Prophecy does not come by the will of man. I hear fellow brethren sometimes say, for me, if I want, I can now go to America. Now, if I want. By your will. Listen, no prophecy is of... But it did not come by the will of man. You don't wake up and say, I have been places. Sometimes I've been praying and the Lord leads me somewhere. Like one time I saw a place somewhere in Virginia. In the spirit. And I saw it. And I woke up. And I didn't know what to say of it. And a couple of months later, I'm in that place exactly on the same road, and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh my goodness, I saw this in the spirit. But it is not because I wanted to go to Virginia. Who is understanding what I'm saying? It is not because I decided and I said, now, eh, me, when I want, I just go to... No, listen, you don't... It's not the will of man under which the spirit of prophecy functions. The spirit of prophecy functions under the, the will of God. The will of God. And I've been to places too. I could share a few things that would interest you. 
But I cannot claim that at any of those one moments I made the decision. Because if you do, then you're going by another spirit. I will explain that. He says the prophecy came not in all, in the, in all time by the will of man, but by the holy men of God. The Bible says they speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost moves them. They don't wake up and they say, now, if I want, I can go to France. Now, let me go and attend. Um, what can I attend? Let me go just and just watch anything I want. Because I want. This is another thing. Now, there are these little young boys who think that that is how God speaks. They are yielding to familiar spirits even without a knowledge and getting defied every day. And this is the reason. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. That is why you realize when a man yields to a familiar spirit, which is not the spirit of God, his eyes will lust to see. His flesh will lust for a certain glory. And he will have the pride of life. That is why the moment they hear God, they start creating a certain atmosphere around them. It's the pride of life. Oh, you don't get it. It's the pride of life. The Bible says those things proceed not from the Father. They do not proceed. They are of the world. Those things are of the world. God has not anointed you to start walking a certain way. God has not anointed you to start looking like the world. God has not anointed you to look like Hollywood. No. 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 No, I'm not saying don't look good, don't dress smart, that's okay. But I'm only saying the pride of life is a certain aura you create around you and a certain impression around you as though you dwell in the light in which men cannot approach. Yet you're a human being and you go to the lose. Have I mentioned any name? The one you think I'm not the one, I'm not talking about them. <laughs> Praise God. He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Do you know how many people just lust to see? The eyes can lust. Oh, pray for me, I want to see in the spirit. Why do you want to see? I just want. Anyandoga, <laughs> is that rain? Eh? Huh? Praise God. Who is bewitching me? Who is sending things on me? You tell me, Apostle. So what if they are sending things on you? Who have been they sent things on? Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? In Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1, the Bible says the serpent was more subtle than any other beast. Which the Lord God made. Are you following? And the Bible says, And he said unto the woman, God has said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the next verse says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the Bible says, But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the of, of garden, God has said you shall not eat or touch it, lest you what? You die. And the next verse says, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God's, knowing good and evil. Your eyes will be open. The Hebrew word there for eyes is one. It's ayin. It's eye. Not eyes. It's eye. It's not eyes. It's, not, it's eye. One. The subtle devil wanted to introduce the church, or oh, Adam and Eve, to a certain vision. Are you following me? He wanted to introduce Adam and Eve. To a certain eye. A certain way to see. Because he convinced Adam and Eve that what they see is not enough. You understand what I'm saying? Yet they were in perfect harmony with God. And after their eyes open, they fall. And the Bible says, and the woman seeing... Huh? That means he gave her a vision. The tree was good for 
food, that's an eye issue, lust of the eye, that it was pleasant to the eyes, that means the, last, the eyes lasted immediately for the fruit. And the Bible says, and able to make one wise. The Bible says, she took of the, of, of, of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also her husband. And they both did eat. Why? Because the eyes, you see, he says the eyes, the, the, the eyes saw that this fruit could make a man wise. Wisdom is not seen by the, with a physical eye. It is seen with a spiritual eye. How many of you know that? That a spiritual eye can see wisdom. So the eye saw that it was pleasant. It was able to make one, one wise. What happened? He confounded the vision of Eve to behold another testimony against the vision God had cast on that fruit. And what led to that? That was the fall of man like we know it. How many of you know that? Now, this thing called the third eye, I've mentioned it a bit, but I've not gone deep. Today I'm going to go deep. This thing called the third eye, it's real. How many of you have heard of it? How many of you have never heard of it? I'll explain. They believe that a human being has two eyes. But there's another eye that a human being has that you and I don't, have, don't know or it, no, that is not physically seen. And that is what they call the third eye. It is part of... In, 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 in the occult, it's in the, they call it in the esoteric content. It's in the hidden things of occultism. It's not something that is as direct as many people assume it is. But it exists on almost many Eastern religions of the world. It is the invisible eye. Some people call it the sixth sense. It is the gate to to the other realm. It is, they call it the gate that enlightens men to higher consciousness. It is the gate to the inner realms of the spirit that many people are not open to. That's what they call the third eye. You understand? It means that I see more than, more than I see physically. Some of you have seen Indian cultures. Have you seen Indians with red things here? They mean to say, we don't only see with this eye. No, we have another one. You understand what I'm saying? In Hinduism, it's there. In Buddhism, it's called the middle eye of Shiva. In Freemasonry, it's the all-seeing eye. In Egypt, it's called the eye of Horus or Osiris. In, in, in Taoism, that Chinese group, they call it the mind of the eye. In almost all of these things... There is a third eye concept. And there is a training to open the third eye. It's a training. They can train you. And part of the ways they train in opening the third eye is meditation. The only difference between the Christian meditation and the other meditation is the Christian meditation is on the word. You shall meditate there in day and night. Their meditation means you, 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 you because the primal, the primal, the primary place of meditation is kundalini yoga, right? You, you, you conjure up yourself to the position to enlighten yourself by emptying your mind to be filled. How many of you know? They always say an empty mind is a devil as well. So with this meditation, they teach men to empty their minds. With our meditation, we teach men to fill their minds with the word of God. Who has understood what I just said? Now, when you talk about such mysticism, it is desired by the carnal nature. People want to see beyond what they see physically. It is a natural thing that people want to see beyond what they see physically. And some of you better examine yourselves whether you want to see by purpose or by lust. Do you want to see because God is trying to show you some by direction? Or do you want to see because you just want to see? I, I just want to see. Why? I just want. Why? I, I just want to see. You understand? And a familiar spirit says, well, if you just want to see, you, mine is free. You just can come any time. Right? That's what they call clairvoyancy. The French word clairvoyance. To clearly see. They are also called seers, like our prophets. 
But they behold not the testimony of Jesus Christ. As you continue to see, certain things start to come out and they are not Jesus. They begin like, oh my God, Jesus, where they can claim. But as they continue to minister, you start to see things that are not the Christ. Have I made sense? Or am I making some sense? Now one time there's this guy, he stood up and he said, May I believe in the third eye? He's a prophet. He ministers in the church of Jesus Christ somewhere in the U.S. He says, may I believe in the third eye? And he says that one day he was sleeping and the angel Daniel appeared. To, no, the prophet Daniel appeared to him. And when Daniel appears to him, Daniel tells him that people are saying the third eye is wrong, but it's not. It already existed. The devil has never created anything. It's the pineal gland, like we all say, it's like many psychologists call it the pineal gland. That gland is somewhere in the middle of the eye here. You understand? And he says that Daniel told him that this thing you call the third eye, it is real and it works. But people call it evil, yet it's not what? Evil. So according to the revelation of prophet Daniel, this man embraced the third eye. He's a prophet in the church of Jesus. He preaches in some churches in America. But... He teaches even how to open the third eye. Because he believes that when Daniel appeared to him, finally he got to understand it. Wait. God spake in diverse manners and ways in the, through the prophets of old. But the Bible says, but now he speaks by Jesus. What business does this young fellow need to do with Daniel appearing to him to give him an assignment? Yet the Bible says God at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times unto the fathers by the prophets and as in the last days spoken unto us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things by whom were the cosmos is made, the worlds. For him is saying Daniel appeared to him in a light. Ellen G. White says she had a light. The Adventist snow. You go to the, 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 the guy, uh, Joseph Smith. He says he got a light. Mohammed got a light when, when the angel Gabriel appeared unto him. How many of us do not know right now that in the metaphysical world, in the metaphysical, not the eternal, in the metaphysical, not the eternal, in the metaphysical, light is Satan. He says no wonder that Satan has transformed himself even as an angel of light. How many of us don't know now that there's a difference between metaphysical, just that world, and the eternal? Eternally, Christ and God are the light. But when it comes to the other true lights, but Satan also has created his own light. And some people think that everything that is light is God. And you're going to read the eye of Osiris, it is surrounded by light. The New Age movement, they are surrounded by light. They are the enlightened ones, the Illuminati. Why are they enlightened? Because that, that eye, the eye, you've seen it on the dollar sign. It is looking like this. You realize on that dollar sign, it's also surrounded by light. Meaning it's illuminated. Are you following what I'm trying to say? Are you following what I'm trying to say? Now, this guy, and how did I land on him? The Lord told me, Google this person. You don't need to believe me. I don't care. I can't lie before this altar. The Lord told me, Google this person. Had never met the guy. I did not know him. He told me, type these words on YouTube. I typed the exact words the Spirit of the Lord told me. Guess what? That's the guy who appeared. He read a woman's life from 1847. Had descendants up to 20, I think 14 or 15. From 1847. Reading grandfathers, grandmothers, sisters, cousins and everything. And all of these things were true. And the woman was hit. Of course, the guy was reading names, numbers, phone numbers and everything. And it was beautiful. So the Lord tells me, listen to a teaching. On the same YouTube, I go on YouTube and I'm listening to this guy teaching. And the guy is teaching off, literally off. So I thought to myself, if a man says, Methuselah, he was teaching, he says, Methuselah means the man after. Mesu, man, after, Selah. When you go to the Hebrew and Greek, Methuselah has no meaning of that sort. So I'm thinking to myself, 
How can you see in the spirit to the intent of 1847, but you don't see through the testimony? Knowledge is not depth. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Am I saying because I'm heady? There is a problem. Then, just below him was another video of a guy who had opened his third eye. And the same guy, this one was not Christian. And he also said, I got knowledge of my great-grandfathers even more than 200 years back. This was another guy whose third eye had opened and he was testifying the same testimony of the prophet who is teaching on the altar and they are all saying they are of the third eye but one uses God, another one uses the devil and it's supposed to be okay because you see, if you have understood the subtlety the devil is working us into, he's working us into the realization that what Kundalini uses to see is what the Christian uses to see, is what the Hinduist uses to see, is what the Buddhist uses to see, it's what the Jainist uses to see, it's what the Taoist uses to see. You're all one. Who has understood what I'm saying? You're all one. So there's no reason of you, what? Separating yourselves from each other. New world order. We want a unification of religions because they're all the same. If you're saying that you're seeing, your Christian is seeing in the prophetic with a third eye. Even the Hinduist has the third eye. Even, don't you see we are all one? That's why people have now coined the idea of we all serve the same God. Isn't it true? No! The Bible says we have an altar from which they have no right to eat. No, no, no. I cannot serve the same God as a guy who faces a black box and says, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen, Rahman, Rahim. No! Mine is not in a black box, hallelujah! He's not in the grave, hallelujah! He died and rose again! But am I making sense? Now, they are, you know this, this, this message I'm preaching? One day people will listen to it and they'll be like, oh... This is what the guy was speaking about. Praise God. You cannot have it in Buddhism. And have it in Hinduism. It's a chakra. The sixth chakra they call it. From the brow. The foundation is Kundalini. Serpent power. They call it. Remember serpent? Power. Remember serpent? Genesis. Common sense. Of course they think everyone is desperate. No. No, 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 no. Listen. If you have not had a word from a man of God, get into your Bible. He says you are above and not beneath. Whether I've said it or not, you are above and not beneath. He says you are the head and not the tail. Whether I've said it or not, you are the head and not the tail. He says you are above and not beneath. That's it, that's it. Set it in your heart. Am I against prophecy? Am I against prophets? No. But there is a familiar thing that is coming in the body of Christ and people call it prophecy, forensic. When you read how the Isaiah is, oh no, no, this is a new dispensation. No. If it's a new dispensation, you ought to be deeper than Isaiah. You ought to reveal the testimony of Christ more than Isaiah did. You should not leave this altar and feel like this. By the time you're done with the altar of Jesus, everyone feels it's you. No. We must decrease. And he must increase. The gospel is about losing yourself and giving yourself. Not taking laurels. Not taking glory. Can I say? Can I? You you fear. I saw you. Hey, hey, hey. I, 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 What is the Lord saying? But am I making sense? <laughs> First John chapter 4 verses 1. He says, beloved, believe not every spirit. For you, the moment you hear, hey, guy, I love. Uh, no, no. Believe not every spirit. 
The Bible says, try the spirits, whether they are of God. Try the spirits. Try them against the testimony. Look for the testimony. Are they winning souls? If you, listen, even the prophetic is to perfect saints for the work of ministry. So it's not just there to tell you the name of your husband. It's true. No. It is there. He says he gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints to the edification. For the work of ministry to the edification of the body. The saints must be perfected, that is matured, matured into the what? Work of the ministry for the edification of the body. Since you started listening, are you being perfected for the work of ministry to edify the body? All for you every time you're there, God speak. Speak my next job, speak. Then they tell you a job. Ah, yeah, poo. Then you fall down. Then you come back again. Now, tell me my husband. Ah, <laughs> now, tell me which car I'm going to drive. Ah, Forensic. Now, tell me which... The gospel is more than the man she will marry. Even if she does not marry. God is still bigger. You remember the girl in the, in the Bible who had the spirit of divination? What does the Bible say? The Bible doesn't say she brought God, God glory. No. The Bible says she brought her masters much gain. Watch out for the spirit that brings attention to the man. You don't put your toys above your tools. No. You put the tools above the toys. You didn't get it. You did? You don't put the toys above the tools. You put the tools above the toys. You put the tools of ministry above the, your toys of in, indulgence. Some people still think that being a man of God, you have to... No comment. Listen, this is not the spirit. This is not the gospel. This is not Jesus. This is, not, this is something else. If you have ever heard God, you know he doesn't speak like that. Now look at this. Let me make it simpler for you. If you are not led by the Spirit, you are led by another Spirit. And if, for example, I always tell my fellow Christians that we have to avoid using statements like, I'm going to teach you how to enter the Spirit. Because that's the beginning of things. Unless you mean you are going to teach to walk. But when you say, I'm going to teach you to enter, that's the wrong teaching. Listen, Christians live in the Spirit. In fact, the teaching of the Bible says, like you live in the Spirit, walk. That's the teaching of Galatians 5.25. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. He's not telling us, let us learn to enter. Listen. Anybody who takes you out of the spirit to teach you to enter is teaching you to enter by another. You're already in the spirit realm. You have an unction, an anointing from on high. You know all things. Why are you putting yourself in the level of seeking to know what you're already supposed to know? That's a lower level. Listen. Can you stop lasting and allow God to show you what you must know? And what he doesn't want you to know, don't look for it. Don't look for it. Can I tell you a personal experience? One time, many years ago, I was learning these things. I was very indifferent. And I love the spirit. I love the spirit realm. So one day, I decided to go on a personal journey of going in the spirit realm. Many years ago. I know what I'm telling you. Many years ago. And in just a couple of minutes, I closed my eyes. 
in my ignorance, has already in the spirit. Immediately. Two fellows walk in. I, they, I was seeing both of them. And they come to talk to me. I was alone in the room, but I was seeing both of them. Very clearly. And when they come to communicate with me, the voice of the Lord, and this is God, I can tell you. I have never had God that angry. He, I had this voice come so strong and he told me immediately, get out of there! And as the voice itself didn't get me out, no, there was a power behind that voice that literally carried me up back into my body. It was so scary that I stood there even breathing. I was, I was so scared because I'd never, it was so scary. Many, many years ago, and the Spirit of the Lord told me, never enter where I have not led you. So I know what I'm talking about. Don't ever put yourself in a position of thinking that for you can enter the Spirit. You're like this guy says, me, if I want to know who's talking about me, I just close my eyes and then I hear. No. Please, don't contradict Scripture. And then convince us that you're speaking truth. That is not the spirit of the Lord. How many understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, of course, because we last to see, which is good, and every Christian should, eh, 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 every man should be able to see. <laughs> the Bible is very clear that a righteous man for us sees evil, and he hideth himself. The simple and foolish, they fall into it. You're not supposed to just fall into things like that. No. Whatever, be, listen, we see every, it's like a couple of days I saw a certain attack on us. I, 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 I just found myself praying the right way. But you see, it's how the ministry is preserved. Because God tells me when they attack, how they attack, and I know how to pray. That's for me. I don't ask God for more. And I don't lose appetite because I've not had. I have the word. It has spoken wonderful things. Who has understood what I'm saying? Because I want to avoid a place where I will last to see. Because I think that knowledge is depth. We're still trying to reconcile that. It is not. Am I making some sense? Am I making some sense? Some guy, the same guy I was talking about, who misinterpreted scripture... Um, he taught something in Matthew and he said, the eye is there in Matthew 6.22. And he says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And the Bible says in the next verse, hey, if thine eyes be evil, then thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, oh, how great darkness it is. He says, no, you see the third eye is there. He quoted Matthew 6.22. And he says, no, the eye is even Jesus talked about the eye. The Greek word there for the word eye is ophthalmos. Right? When he says if your eye, ophthalmos, meaning your vision, it means vision. The eyes of the man, the faculty of knowing, it's vision. The place of knowledge. It's, 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 it's the faculty of vision, the place, the mind, the, the place of knowing. He says if your knowledge is if your eye be what? Single. The word there for single is if it functions in its true office. If your place of knowledge functions in its true office, then you'll be flooded with light. He's not talking about that third eye. Who has understood what I'm saying? He's not about the third eye. In fact, if you read the context of Matthew 6.22, if you read the verses before and the verses after, you realize Jesus was teaching about giving. No, no, you read. Okay. Let, pr let, let's just go ahead and plan, but let's go there. Let's go to, to verses 19. He says, verses 19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through the steel and steel. You see, he's telling, don't just do put things on. You know, I've learned to give. Give to the poor. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. 
Right? How do you lay up treasures upon in, in the heavenly places? By giving. What does the next verse say? Uh-huh. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break through to what? To not steal. And then he puts a full colon. Hey, hey, go back. Uh-huh. He says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then he talks about the eye, the evil eye, and, 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 and the other kind of eye. And then after talking about the evil eye, you see in verses 24, after talking about the eye, he says, no man can serve two masters that are gold. He's talking about giving. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on the one and then despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. He's talking about money. <laughs> Praise God, somebody. Maybe let me show you something. In Proverbs 22, verses 9. I want to show you that it's an eye issue. He says, 22 verses 9, He that has a bountiful eye, a giver, shall be, for he giveth bread too. That is the eye he's talking about. Not the third eye. The eye that observes people who are in need. And you can observe that this woman slept hungry before she tells you. And you get money out. That is treasure. You know some of you help people who can help you. Or you give when people beg. I'm talking of that instance where you wake up and you feel like somebody needs tuition. And they didn't ask you for it. That's a good eye. Praise God somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise God somebody. The reason why I take time to share these things is this simple. That you learn to be settled in what God speaks to you. And if it doesn't, be okay. He knows you don't need it. Adam and Eve opened themselves up to a certain knowledge because they lasted for a knowledge that was without purpose. And how many of you know that Daniel says that in the last days knowledge shall increase? That means the biggest threat is that men are seeking for knowledge. Men are so hungry for knowledge that they are willing to do anything. And like he told Adam and Eve, you shall be as gods. Elohim. You shall be among the creators. That's what the enlightened ones of this generation want. That's why the all new age movements of this generation have. They're enlightened. They know more than the average person knows. They're not average people. You put yourself lower to think you don't know, to seek to know what God believes that you know. <laughs> he says you have an action. Didn't I say? You have an action from on high. You know all things. You must believe that you know. You must believe that you know. I know my children. I know the ministry I, I pastor. You must be confident. I know my husband. I know him. Not, oh, who is he? God, oh, where will he come from heaven? Mwe? <laughs> Somebody say, I have an unction. I know. No, you ask everyone who is married. People who are married, put up your hands. How many of you bear me witness? That if they asked you right now, how did you know that your spouse was the one? You just say, you know. If you agree, put up your hands. You just know. Before even prophecy falls, before even a vision comes, uh -uh, inside there, it's church manyanti. Because you're born of the Spirit, you have the Holy Ghost. You're getting the one you have inside you. And you're putting him on the side. And you're, you're coming to Apostle Grace to tell you what you know. Praise the Lord somebody. That was Paul's fear. You, you realize that when he says no marble Saturn comes as an angel of light, it's in the same chapter. Just on the verses lower. 14 I think. It's the same chapter. He's trying to communicate. But even him, he has fears like me. That they might think, he, over what? Over what? Praise God. Now, young people are yielding to familiar spirits. They are yielding to a spirit which is not the spirit of the Lord. And when they start speaking, you don't hear the gospel. No, they can't teach. That's why I tell people, if you don't carry wisdom for the word... 
Why do you call yourself a prophet? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. At least know the basics. Some prophets say, when you dream a mango, you're going somewhere. Man, go. I said, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Man, go, mango. You're going somewhere. No, no. And people stood and said, wow, shake a brakata. <laughs> Some of us dream mangoes. Nenga, it was out of the abundance of seeing mangoes the whole day. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. God can speak through a man of God. God can speak through a woman of God. But I'm only saying as we continue to grow, let us be able to discern what spirit speaks. It's all I'm trying to say. I believe in prophecy. I saw in prophets. Uh, you ask them some who have met. The, the moment I meet a prophet, God, they have spoken a word that I agree in my spirit. Because I believe in the spirit of prophecy. But there is something wrong. I know some of you have understood. How many have understood? Please help me. Yes. There is something wrong. But wait, wait, wait. There are some that has entered the body of Christ. It's another thing. It doesn't carry a certain glory around it. It carries a huge deception. And this is a problem with opening the third eye. I will not tell you what they use. But some, you are going to realize many people with third eyes have things they don't eat. So where is the spirit of grace? But if you ever eat meat, Simanya, you'll close the eye. If you watch TV, you close the eye. To keep it open, you have to not... Uh, listen, freely given, freely receive, freely give ye. You receive freely. God did not ask you to add anything. But this is the challenge. Like Colossians says, this is the biggest fear. That in the knowledge of what is accurate and factual, you get to the deception that it is true. That is where the biggest fear is. It can be true, yet not accurate. And it can be accurate, yet not true. You're accurate that the sister stole money last week. But are you true to uncover what God has forgotten? Ah, help me. He says, and your sins, I shall remember them no more. I shall throw them to the ends of the earth. And I shall remember them no more. Now, you, if God has forgotten the woman's sin, under what spirit do you see it? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Unless she's struggling with a present continuous issue. It, that's another thing. To see and say you're struggling with this and it's present continuous. But if it is past tense, where is the purpose of God unveiling what is forgotten? Even Elisha, you remember the Shunammite woman? She falls before him. And he tells his servant, let her go. For the Lord has not revealed to me what is wrong with her. This was a prophet. But God refused to tell him. What was wrong with a Shunammite woman? Because it was not in her heart. That means everything spoken must be here. We only prophesy to confirm what is affirmed in your spirit. That's what I'm trying to say. Otherwise you're going to hear things you're not supposed to hear. And from souls and spirits you're not supposed to listen. And you're defiling yourself. Some people have, are defiled. You reach someone and you have a conversation with them. Eh? And they start to sound and act unwisely. And you're sure there's another spirit at work. Because by this much you see in the spirit. You must see also in the word. If you wake up tomorrow and become proud because you're hearing God. In the early church you're not even appointed because you're novice. You'll destroy yourself. <laughs> I'm trying to save you from yourself. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a madness that is coming in the body of Christ. And there are things that are not and people think are. What is killing me here is that when the true spirit of the prophet comes up, the church will throw it out. Because they won't be able to differentiate men who see condoms and men who hear God, who really hear God for a nation, who really hear God for a generation. That's my fear. And the thought that this young boy who is growing up thinks that it's forensic prophecy. It's like, if I've been to places where, for example, God can show you where someone lives. But that is for purpose. I don't know one time you are in Chambog where I described the boy's home and I told him, if you live in that house, move out. And it fell the next day. That was purpose. But I just don't wake up and I say, can I come in your house now? Have I been to your house? I enter. Now you enter for what? What business do you have in houses when people are dying of nodding disease in the north? You understand what I'm saying? There is something wrong. Some of you will understand later, but the things I've shared will open your eyes. So, Balaam used to give in both worlds, and that's what is happening to some of our boys. When he prophesies or she prophesies, and then things work wonderful. Then people come and they want more prophecy. And then they don't hear God at that particular point. They get a familiar spirit. There are things. Then you see divination on some people. This some is not even just that eye now. It's divination. One time as in an overnight, some girl came and slapped a girl and told her, Stop sleeping around! Pa! Namboru! Slapped her in, my, in our face. And it was true that probably the girl was doing funny things. You, stop doing this. No, no, no. And while I was in that same overnight, the Spirit of the Lord told me, this is not prophecy. Rebuke it now. I stood up in that openness as she slapped. I went to her and I said, you spirit of divination, hush! She fell down under the power. Boom! And out. <laughs> Another day I was in a church. These people know I've shared that story before. Some young man starts screaming. Now I'm going to translate in English. Why do you make me cry? I am Jesus speaking. Why do you make me cry? Why do you sin? Why do you do... The guy started... People all started getting scared. That Jesus was what? He's crying and speaking. You're sinning. You're doing this. You're doing that. You're doing this. And the guy, the brother was blind. Apostle Emma, were you there? Yes, the brother was even blind. In, in the eyes. Physically. So... As you're speaking, you make me cry. I am Jesus speaking. I walk to the brother like this. In the middle, when the child, the whole church was like this. I touch him, tata, brother. He said, who? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I told him, that is not God. He said, oh. I kept quiet. Immediately I preached. Some of you have been in churches where prophetesses can come shaking like this. Listen to me! <laughs> then everyone moves. Everybody moves. Don't do this! Don't do this! Don't do this! Do this! Don't do this! I tell you, do this! Don't do this! You do this! You do this! Oh! Then after screaming, for me what kills me, the, the most epic moment is when they zoom down to... God bless you. They are finished. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. God does not set you besides you. He sets you above you. This was in today's devotion, I think. He doesn't set you besides you. Me, I spoke when I don't know what I'm speaking. No, no, no. no. Those are demons. That's a familiar spirit. And if you're here and you say, can you believe I don't know what I spoke? You are under another spirit. You've received the spirit of love Power and sound mind. 
Don't lose your brain. God is speaking through you. Then you don't remember what he spoke. No. You're not a piece. He just gets into uses and lives there. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want us to pray. I want us to pray for Uganda, for Africa, for the world. I want us to pray for the true prophets that are really true. I want us to pray for the innocent ones who are being deceived because they don't know the word. I want us to pray for our children who are coming in a generation where they do not know the difference between true and false. May these words guide them someday. I'm not saying start mentioning names of ministers. No, please don't. That's why I've given only only examples of ministers outside the country. I've not mentioned anyone here, and I have my reasons. Because I don't want to appear like I'm attacking a man, but there is something wrong. There is something wrong in the way God speaks in this generation. Let the voice humble us. Let us become true servants of Almighty God. Let us, let the word, let, let, let even his voice bend and break us the more. Let us never get over exalted and inflate ourselves above measure because we have had God. Please don't do luxury miracles. Do miracles of purpose. Don't just do something because you can do it because the Lord leads you. Don't enter the spirit unless you are led there. Please. And stay away from voices that tell you, me, I can just go. No, 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 no. It's not your will. It's his will. Not I, but thine will. Be done. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop using your own understanding. Proverbs says it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, not yourself, and He shall direct your paths. Somebody shout hallelujah. And let me also say this as I close from an apostolic perspective. In spite of all that, I don't want you to fear to hear. Because whether we want it or not, in this dispensation, in fact, even as I'm speaking, I'm seeing the anointing. They are true prophets. The Lord has given a clear voice. By the Holy Ghost! They are true prophets. True. People who are called in the office. Whose office carries knowledge and vision. Who carry conviction of this nation and everything around them? Who feel that they are less because they are not yielded to familiar spirits? Or who feel that because they've received part of what some people fe- receive bigger, they feel they are less? You're not less. God asks Jeremiah, What do you see? And the man says, I see a sycamore tree. But God wanted to give him prophecy over Israel. He asked him, what do you see? I see a a boiling pot boiling in the direction of the north. And sometimes he might not show you what Israel is about. But he might come in figures and forms. He might show you things, cows and trees. But he's speaking to you. But whichever way he speaks, don't ever feel yourself lower. Because a certain man spoke differently. And not everyone who sees numbers and what is wrong. No. Not everybody who has debts is wrong. Not everybody who prophesies accurately is wrong. But I'm saying there is a problem. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Raise your hands and let's speak to God. I'm changing you. We have come. Let the ancient word and burn. Ancient words. 
sing another chance. For I walk in this world, there is sound with God's own heart. Oh, let me shed words, sing words, words of life, words of hope. Help us grow this world where we we roam. Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing me. We have come. Hand it down out to the tears, him to us to sacrifice. Oh, he's a thing to work your price. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing. We love and hurt. Oh, let me say word in Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Help us, God. Help our nation, God. Help Africa. May we not be so consumed by carnal desire to last for the things that we must walk into by purpose. May our eyes and ears never open to a foreign one. May we never yield to strangers. And may our hearts never submit to familiar spirits. All in the name of wanting to hear and see. You've given us the word. It is enough, God. The Bible calls it the sure word of prophecy. Of which you do good to heed as a light that shines in darkness. Until the dead dawn and the bright the star shine in your heart, our hearts. And there are true prophets out there, God. I know. You speak to people. I believe it. Even to the most threatening details I have seen with men, even with myself. But there is something that is coming in the body of Christ. God help us preach the gospel. We pray for those that are lost and deceived that you restore them. We don't judge them. Restore them, God. We don't hate them, God. Take these words to their spirits. If indeed the light in them is darkness, God, give them the true light. Light from the eternal into the metaphysical realm where they behold Satan and let them see you as the true light. God, this is for us and our children and our children's children. This is for the posterity of the gospel and the men who shed their blood for it. The people who paid the price that we might stand and preach this gospel. You hold us accountable to hold these things true to men and be worthy stewards, both committed and available to preach truth in and out of season. And as the word comes out, the Bible says, by my word I have cleansed I believe that the Lord cleanses you of all sickness. I believe that God delivers you financially. I believe that God works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. I believe that you're going to have a wonderful week this week. A very blessed month this month. That this is the best year of your life. That the worst has already happened and the greatest things are yet to come. That God shines on your life. That God upholds and uplifts you with his hand. That is going to do mighty things in your life like never before. That things are going to work in your favor always. That you're going to flow on the winds of the spirit. That things are going to happen faster and quicker. That the doors of favor flung open before you. 
even before men who are not your tribe, your skin, your color. Gentiles come to you. Kings come to your rising. And strangers serve you. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. It's an anointing. Receive it. Can you carry those people in front? By the way, see a light. Witches of God. Hallelujah. I see God shining on certain people. A certain way. And that light differentiates you from normal men. Take it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say this week is mine. This year is mine. In the mighty name of Jesus.